Welcome to another Dr. Sadler's Honest Book Review. This is a series where I give you the straight dope, very unvarnished takes on books in practical philosophy and allied fields, such as personal development, practical reasoning, ethics, leadership, self-help, all those sorts of things. And the book that I have today fits in really solidly within that. It's an introductory book about stoicism, as you can guess from the title, The Stoic Mindset, Living the Ten Principles of Stoicism. And it's by Mark, and I'm sure I'm going to mangle his name, Tutert. Uh, I'm, I'm told that's the proper pronunciation of his, his Dutch name. I'll probably mix it up a bit, so don't get too hung up on that. So this is a book that is quite literally hot off the presses. It has come out in its uh, final form this month. This is a translation of a book that was published earlier. So uh, the translation is by Heiko Keshuk. I'm sure I've mixed up that name. And it comes out from St. Martin's Essentials, which is part of St. Martin's Publishing Group. So it's a short book. Um, if we're counting the actual pages in it, it's 136 pages. I do want to say something else about this before we jump in and start going through the things that I'm usually talking about. So you may have seen another review of a book that also was accompanying this that came out from St. Martin's Press that I gave a very negative review to where uh, uh, Twitter had written a um, introduction to it. It was called The Essential Stoic. And I said, ah, you know, the texts that are being used here, really kind of questionable what's going on. And uh, I'm very pleasantly surprised to have gone through this and to be able to give this book a much more positive read and endorsement than I had with the probably the most negative <laughs> review that I have done of its perhaps companion volume. So this is a good book. The other one, eh, not, not quite so good. All right, we always begin with the three S's, style, structure, summary. So let's start with style to begin with. So this is clearly a book that is aimed at the sort of, you know, introductory level people who would find uh, reading somebody's stories rightly inspiring. It'll teach you bits and pieces about stoicism, some of them a little bit more systematically than others. And, and the style is, you know, here's me, uh, a uh, Olympic class uh, skater, and here's what happened in my life. Here's how stoicism became really useful for me. I'd like to share this in bits and pieces with you that are easily taken in, easily digested. You could incorporate this in your life. And it's, you know, here we get to the structure of the work. You're going to notice that it's divided into some very, very short chapters. It's a small book. There's a lot of emphasis placed on visual design in it, you know, even in the pages that are uh, discussing things. And, you know, here's another nice image from it. And nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to knock that. There's, there's certainly a room for that. I myself teach at an Institute of Art and Design, so I've got an appreciation for that. And that's an integral part of this work. There's an introduction in which uh, Twitter is talking about his own story. He says, 12 years, I trained 12 years for less than two minutes of speed skating. He's talking about February 2010. And, um, you know, he's 29 years old and all the things that are going through his mind. And then he, he tells you that um, stoicism was something useful for me. He mentions Seneca, Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus and talks about a stoic mindset, which we're going to get to uh, in that idea in just a bit. Then there's 10 chapters and each of the chapter has a kind of slogan, for example, chapter one, use setbacks as signposts. Now, 
There's a lot of reformulating things that have already been said by the classic Stoics, by contemporary Stoics into little nice sound bites like this as the chapter titles and as the subjects. They begin with a quote. You'll actually see quite a few quotes in here. And then there's like a personal story from uh, Twitter's life. He starts weaving in some lessons from Stoic texts and authors and telling you about how it fit in with his life. And then there's going to be all these little vignettes of the Stoic X, where in this, so in this case, the Stoic freelancer. And we'll tell you about what all of them are in just a bit. There's one chapter where instead of being the Stoic X, it's actually um, titled Good Stoic Resolutions, so breaking that up a bit. And then there's going to be some sort of exercise. And the exercise is something that, you know, you don't want to do in the book. It usually says, get a piece of paper, and there'll be a bunch of steps some of these exercises are not brand new. They are taken from many other lists of other people doing similar exercises. This is kind of a common thing in, you know, learn about Stoicism, popular literature. But, you know, they're well laid out and it tells you, like, you know, what the point of the exercise is, what the effects hopefully are going to be with you. And then there's a bunch of different steps to them. So each chapter is set up like that. There are, you know, living the 10 principles of Stoicism, 10 chapters, each of which has to do with one of these things. That's supposed to affect or build a Stoic mindset. And, you know, the summary of the work, if you had to give it in one line, hey, Stoicism worked for me, it can work for you. Here's how to get started with it. So those are the three S's, I think, in essence. Let's move on now and talk about these chapters and what the main ideas actually are. So before we run through each of the chapters, I'll just say two things about like the big ideas. So one of these is that, you know, it's kind of like a personal case study telling a compelling story with a character arc of, you know, I thought I had it all together, but I didn't, man. And then stoicism helped me out in this way, in this way, in this way. And now I'm much happier as a person who left behind to some degree the career that he had, but I've got better relationships with my family members and as a person and with my community and I've transitioned and that could be something like your story as well. And it's, it's actually, you know, a good compelling story. It's not making stuff up. Um, it's uh, interesting. It's, it's, you know, as we're going to talk about later, it's quite relatable, even though we're not most of us competing at the Olympic level. Um, but you know, that that's quite good. Now Twitter. So the, the, title of it would, you know, lead you to think that, so there is a the Stoic mindset and 10 principles of Stoicism. And we'll get to that in a bit. I do want to point out that in the introduction, he is going to tell us, um, this book was written to share with you my interpretation and implementation of the Stoics lessons. I have distilled all the Stoic texts, exercises, and applications I've encountered into 10 principles. They've served me as a mind to cultivating a Stoic mindset. In this book, I'll show you how I employ these principles in my own life, at one time as a professional athlete, now as an entrepreneur, as a father. But, so this is a very important point, the Stoic mindset isn't a handbook telling you exactly what you need to do. I encourage you, above all, to go out and seek the Stoic mindset that fits you. And he says, you know, I've got these exercises. They were designed in collaboration with a sports psychologist. I still use them. Maybe they'll be helpful for you. So, you know, is it like the Stoic mindset or a Stoic mindset? Well, there's a interesting ambiguity there, let's say, uh, you know, one that is probably quite intentional because you can read into it whatever you want. And I'm not knocking that because that's kind of a standard trick that uh, all, all the way back to Aristotle's 
art of rhetoric we see people advised to use. So it's done quite, quite adroitly. Now, let, let's talk about what you're going to find in each of the chapters. Before that, though, I mentioned there's always like a stoic X in each of the chapters. So I'm just going to rattle off what these are. And there's only basically a paragraph talking about what this would look like. Each of these could probably be turned into a book, and some people, in fact, have. So we've got the Stoic Freelancer, the Stoic Athlete, the Stoic Entrepreneur, the Stoic Parent, the Stoic Friend. Then we get good Stoic Resolutions, the Stoic Performer, the Stoic Student, the Stoic Leader, and I think this is quite interesting, the Stoic Young Professional, thinking about what it is that a new generation could actually use. And, you know, if you know anything about Stoic ethics, you know that roles and relationships play uh, a really critical part in it. So that's, you know, I think pretty on point in talking about these as examples. So I'm going to read through the um, chapter titles for you. You can get an idea about what they are focusing on. Um, use setbacks as signposts or, you know, a.k.a. the obstacle is the way. Judge less, understand more. Okay, so there's a lot of importance attached to, like, understanding the fact that we are engaging in judgments and we need to be careful about our judgments, right? Win by not focusing on winning. Eh, you know, good point. Uh, you know, there's a lot of thinking about, well, what really matters here? Should I be focused on this or should I be focused on this instead? Um, what's good for the team is good for you. Very nice way of putting something that is encapsulated in the Marcus quote that it actually has. What's good for the hive is good for the bee, although it's translated here as swarm. You know, not necessarily wrong, but... The hive is typically what we, we see it as. Uh, accept your fate and love it. And I will say this about that, that um, particular chapter. So Amor Fati, right? The Stoics didn't use that term. And Twitter rightly points out that hey, this actually comes from Nietzsche, who, by the way, criticized the Stoics on a lot of points. So he doesn't, you know, get that thing wrong because he doesn't actually read the Stoic texts and, you know, understand that sort of thing. That, that's to his credit, I think. Um, the next one, death makes life epic. Okay, so there is a lot of Stoic discussion of how we should look at death, our own death, the death of others. Happiness is a side effect. You know, what is eudaimonia or flourishing? Can we aim at it directly or... Do we have to, you know, view it as arising out of other things? A map is good. A compass is better. Um, that's kind of a cool little, um, you know, contrast there. I kind of like that. And the idea is that, you know, we, we need to calibrate along the way rather than just having sort of a game plan. Um, character is your most important project. If I remember rightly, it's, it's in that uh, chapter rather than the one before. Yes, where the virtues first get talked about, the four cardinal virtues. There's even a little diagram there with pillars, which is, you know, quite nice. Uh, and then finally, actions speak louder than words. You know, again, this is all sort of standard fare from the Stoics, and these are what are being presented in each chapter as the principles of Stoicism that we can orient a story around and we can, you know, after reading Twitter's story, orient our own story around and do some exercises on. That's basically the main points of this book. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty short, um, you know, you might say, well, 140 pages, you can do a lot. Well, you know, not an awful lot when it's, you know, pretty large print and, and a lot of it's taken up by, by graphic design. So, you know, this is, you know, a set of pretty short reflections on these matters, but I think, you know, well done.
All right, let's talk about the good points of the work. I've mentioned I'm giving this book a positive review. I mean, it's not something that I personally would purchase, um, but I can appreciate the work that went into it. And I can see it being useful for people to um, get a starter pack for stoicism and then, you know, go into much more um, sustained, detailed reading on their own study application of that, that sort of stuff. I'll start with the aesthetics. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful book, right? I mean, look at the cover, uh, the design throughout is very, very nice. They, they clearly put a lot of effort into this. It's all oriented around basically red, white, and blue. So uh, an interesting color scheme, you know, that's quite a attractive. Um, and that's, you know, the book is a little pricey. And so I think that's part of what you're paying for here is all the uh, graphic design work that goes into it. And, you know, rightly so. Designers deserve to get paid. Um, it's a good introductory text. Um, there's many of them out there. I think that, you know, when I'm, when I'm reading through it, there isn't anything where I'm like, oh, man, that guy got it wrong. You know, Tweetart knows what he's talking about. And, and that's refreshing to see in a popular work on stoicism, given that there's so much stuff out there that is kind of, you know, tangentially connected with it. Um, the narrative that the tweeter provides of his life, I find it really compelling. It's like the right amount of detail, you know, it's telling a story and, and doing that well is really an art form. So he doesn't go into vast detail. He's not doing a memoir here, but he is really giving you enough essential incidents, his, his ideas, where he got things wrong, how he shifted out of that. Uh, and it's very frank and, and honest. So I, I think that's, you know, a, a nice characteristic about it. Um, you know, when it's talking about stoic thinkers and text, it's getting stuff right. It's accurate. So, you know, Tweetart clearly has engaged with the Stoics, knows what they uh, are, are teaching and talking about. So I, I think that's, that's quite good. Um, it's well written. I, you know, this is a translation from the Dutch. So I'm sure that some of this is due to the translator. As a translator, I'm going to say their name one more time, probably getting it wrong. But, you know, I think translators really need to be acknowledged. Heiko Kashuk, um, I think did a great job. You know, it's, it's well written and readable. And um, I think this is good for a general audience to read. Um, the examples that are given, pretty down to earth, pretty relatable. You know, the sections about people of all sorts of walks of life. That's kind of nice. And um, there are some interesting exercises. As I mentioned, most of these exercises are just, you know, same old stoic exercises repackaged a little bit. So, you know, instead of like the view from above, it's a view from a drone and things like that. But I don't think that's a, that's a problem. And as a matter of fact, you could actually say, well, you know, they're breathing new life into these exercises. There was one that I hadn't seen before that I actually like, and I may start doing with some of my own students and it was in uh chapter eight it's called the life direction triangle and basically what you're doing is um finding the three biggest things that orient your your life and what it is that you value and then you know identifying them making a triangle and seeing what things fit in that so i, I think that's you know kind of cool um, I, I like that, right? Um, you know, I mentioned the layout. The book holds together as a whole. So it's not like the design thing dominated. The, it's really the text is leading the design and the design and the text are working together well, which is interesting because one of the things that doesn't get discussed much are the Stoic virtues. 
And if you've read your Stoic authors on that, the virtue of temperance doesn't just include like not eating like a pig and, you know, um, making sure that you remain, you know, within the scope of your marriage or stuff like that. That's part of it. But decorum, propriety, order, really, really central in Stoic stuff. And I would say that this book, you know, in its, its layout and its structure kind of exhibits that. So that's, that's another good point. Are there any things that are problematic about the text? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're fairly minor, I would say, unless somebody screws up. Like, you know, you can't take this book and say, aha, I've read this book, now I really understand Stoicism. It's not that kind of introductory text. It's giving you little windows, little bits and pieces of things in the words of a contemporary author. And so, you know, somebody could be like, hey, I've got everything I need. I'm a stoic now. That would be their mistake, their fault for doing that. And I don't think that you could actually blame the author for that. But there, that is one thing that could be problematic about it. I also would say some of the key ideas of Stoicism get a little bit less discussion than they deserve. The virtues, for example. There's a little discussion of it in chapter 9. You know, if you know your ancient Stoicism, other than the author Epictetus, all the rest of them are constantly hammering on the virtues, right? So some people have even summarized Stoicism incorrectly as virtue is the only good, right? So, you know, there should have been a little bit more incorporation of that from, from my perspective in order to remain faithful to it. It's more of a, you know... Um, what's in our control, you know, our judgments kind of thing, which is coming from Epictetus primarily, but also from Seneca and, and Marcus and people like that. And that's important, but it's, it's it, you know, you don't want to have an, a, 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 a sort of unbalanced treatment of a vast and systematic philosophy. Um, I think that there's some bad translations at a few points, which again, I don't think as a um, Dutch speaker, Twitter is responsible for. I think that um, the editorial staff kind of fell down on their job by accepting, um, you know, translations that they should have actually checked against the, the Greek or in some cases the Latin. I think mostly the, the Greek. So, you know, for example, there's this... Um, quote that they use um, who then is invincible the one who cannot be upset by anything outside their reason choice yeah that's from a real translation of Epictetus that's a crappy translation reason choice prioracis reason choice is not a good translation of prioracis um, you know we have a couple other ones as well here's a sh uh, an earlier one all things can be divided into two categories that which does lie within the boundaries of our control and that which does not uh control isn't by itself a great translation of ep epumene and then uk epumene in epictetus there's all sorts of literature out there about that but the boundaries that's reading stuff in that's an another poor translation and so, you know, if you're going to publish stuff for the general public, you should be having, you know, decent translations. That, that's the editor's job. Um, we've got another one uh, a little bit later on in the book. Um, yeah, here we go. So, um, where is this? Uh, maybe, I, maybe I don't have it so, so handy, but... Um, there's, there's a number of, of things where you're like, yeah, you should have checked that one through. There is also one passage that I don't know what's going on there, but it's a little confusing even to me. And it reads like this. When Alexander the Great, the famous warlord with his boundless ambition and his stable boy were dead... Emperor Marcus Aurelius told himself death doesn't distinguish between an emperor and a person without social status. 
Well, Alexander died centuries before Marcus Aurelius. So I think this is something that probably made sense in the original Dutch. And the translator kind of bollocks it up. And the, the editor didn't like look through it and say, wait, what, what's going on here? So, you know, but these are pretty minor, right? There's the, most books have some, some sort of problems. I will say there's two other things that I, I think are a bit problematic about the work. So lots and lots of quotes, right? Not a single reference to where you would find these quotes, let alone to which translation or um, you know, edition of the, the translation we're, we're citing here. That's not good. That reduces this basically to the level of a kind of amateurish blog thing. You know, you always want to make sure that quotes are genuine. And I, I didn't see any fake quotes in here, but you also got to say where the hell the quotes come from so that your readers, if they're like, oh man, that's a really cool idea coming from Epictetus or Seneca, they know what book to go to and where to find it. I mean, that's kind of a basic thing that, you know, you wonder what went into this that they didn't actually provide that. And I wonder if the Dutch text actually does have the proper citations and they left it out in the English translation. The other thing that I'll mention, so the Stoic Mindset, capital T, you know, the, living the 10 principles of Stoicism, I have a little bit of a beef with talking in that way. And, and we mentioned that, that Twitter himself says, yeah, I'm not giving you a handbook with the Stoic mindset. Well, then why call it the Stoic mindset and not just like preparing you for a Stoic mindset? There's a little bit of uh, intentional ambiguity there. And these are not the 10 principles of Stoicism by any means. Stoicism has many, many, many more principles than this, many of which I would say are arguably more important and central than some of those contained in this text. So Twitart says, you know, I distilled these into 10 principles for myself. Yes, these are 10 principles. These are not the 10 principles. And so, you know, it's a little bit misleading, but I, you know, you got to sell books. And I think St. Martin's Press probably were the ones who came up with that. So these are kind of minor quibbles rather than major issues with the text. But I, you know, Sadler's Honest Reviews, we got to present the problematic as well as the positive. All right, so final thoughts. Again, I'm very happy when I read through this that this is, you know, a pretty good book for what it's doing by comparison to the other book that St. Martin's Press had sent me, The Essential Stoic, with a foreword by Mark Twitert, which was just, you know, not good at all. So, you know, um, if you wanted to introduce somebody to Stoicism, uh, or if you wanted to get a, a book that might help you think about it in somewhat different ways, this would be a decent book to get your hands on, I would say. Um, you know, the things that are problematic, pretty minor. The things that are good about it, you know, pretty positive. Tweetert's telling a really interesting story about his own life, at least from, from my perspective. So on the whole, I'm going to give it, you know, like a thumbs up and, and give it a recommendation just so that, you know, people understand this is not like the book to learn Stoicism from, but it could be a great introductory text for people. And it could actually be used for like Stoic reading groups to promote discussion, might be quite, uh, quite relatable to many uh, types of people in a modern audience.